Hey Cross Point, we're going to be looking at lesson number three of our 15 series. If you'll recall, we had a little bit of a snow and ice storm here in Murfreesboro uh, a couple Sundays back. And so we're, we taught this with another class and we kind of combined uh, because that class could not get a teacher here. And so we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, uh, lesson number three of this series that we've entitled 15, What Makes You Unmovable. And today we're going to be looking at how you eternity makes you unmovable. And so lesson number one, we talked about how the gospel makes you un, uh, unmovable. Lesson number two, we talked about how the resurrection makes you unmovable. And in this lesson, we're going to look at how eternity makes you unmovable. The reason why we're talking about being unmovable is our theme for the year is taken out of verse number 58, where it says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And when he talks about unmovable, he says, therefore, and we already have said this in our class and in our other parts of our series, that anytime we see a therefore, we have to see what it's there for. And in this case, he's really alluding to the first number, the first 57 verses. And so we've been breaking those apart, thought by thought, really verse by verse in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. And so today we're going to be looking at how eternity makes you unmovable from verses number 21 through 28. And so if you would, grab your Bible. If you've got something there, if you're watching on your device, then I hope you'll be able to just follow along as I read. But he says this, For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. You can cross-reference these verses with Romans chapter number 5, where it says that through Adam, it says, Neither as by death sin, or sin entered into the world, but as by one man uh, life entered into the world. So those are referring to Adam, obviously, passing death and sin on to all of humanity, but Jesus Christ passing life and salvation on through his work on the cross. Verse number 23 says this, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also be subject unto him, that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. I want you to go back and look at a couple of verses with me. First of all, verse number 24, he says, Then cometh the end. So he's talking about following the resurrection of his saints. Then cometh the end. Then verse number 28, And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. I want to take just a couple of minutes. I know that you're probably watching my video I'm, or listening to the podcast. I'm teaching to an empty room. And so we're going to look at these quickly so that we can be uh, conscious of your time. But also I want to make sure that you get the thought of how eternity makes you unmovable. Let's pray and ask God to help us. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity given us to look into your word. Lord, I ask you to help us to take these thoughts. Lord, I pray that you help us to take these verses and be able to apply them to our lives so that we may be a stabilizing group of Christians and group of young adults rather than unstable in all that this society throws at us. pray that you bless us. Lord, I pray that you be with me as I teach this. In your name we pray. Amen. If 2020 and 2020 really taught me anything, it is that I've found that I have been more hopeful and looking forward to eternity been more focused on heaven. Um, I look at a year like 2020 and even the early parts of 2020 that we're in right now, 2021 that we're in right now, and what I'm seeing is that we should finally be able to start to see that this world is not our home. Christians should be growing more uncomfortable with this world rather than more comfortable with it. And one of the effects of that, as you begin to step back and you begin to finally see that this world is getting a little out of hand, that this world is probably not where I'm going to feel the most at home and the most comfortable if I'm a Christian, one of the effects of that is that you should begin to become stable. And here's why. 
is that when you step back and you focus on everything that this world has to offer, it has an unstabilizing effect. There's no way in the world that you can get everything done. There's stress, there's worry, there's anxiety, there's discouragement, there's joy. You can ride the roller coaster of, well, I'm financially stable and now I've lost a job. You can ride the roller coaster of, well, I've got this and now it's broken and now it's not working in the way that I thought that it should. You can do a lot of different things with this world. But one of the things that begins to occur as you begin to put all of your eggs in the basket of this life is that you'll become unstable. You'll be easily shaken. There'll be things that don't go your way and it begins to bother you. There's plenty of that on social media. But as you begin to focus on eternity, it has a stabilizing effect. All of a sudden, the things that begin to bother you in this world begin to kind of fade off the scene because you have something that you're looking forward to that is to come. And so Paul really gives us three different thoughts here about how eternity makes us unmovable. The first one is this, is that the life of eternity makes you unmovable. The life of eternity makes you unmovable. He says in this verse, or, uh, verse number 21, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Did you know that if it were not for Christ, you would have nothing to look forward to after this life? Do you know that if it were not for Jesus Christ's work on the cross, that according to this passage, and we alluded to it last week, without the hope of the resurrection, we are of all men most miserable. Why? Because we've placed our belief in something that cannot occur. We've placed our, our hope and our dreams and everything that we have to live for in something that cannot happen. But because of Christ's resurrection, you and I have the hope of a life that is to come. You and I have the hope of life in eternity. And one of the many reasons why we become unstable is when we begin to focus more on the life of our reality, what's right in front of our eyes, rather than the life that we have in eternity. Here's the sad truth about many Christians. The reason why we don't look forward to heaven is because we've made heaven here on this earth. We don't need to look forward to eternity, eternal life. We don't need to look forward to life after this earth. We don't need to look forward to death because we've really created heaven here on this earth. And one of the evidences of really every person in the world being fearful of death is what we've seen the last couple of months with the coronavirus. Fear of death has a way of changing your motives. It has a way of changing your priorities. And while many people look at something like that and they, they bring everything back and they try to stay safe and they try to protect themselves and they try to protect those around them, there's nothing wrong with that. Then in fact, there's, there's a lot right with it. But what I'm saying is that the fear of death causes us to really change the way that we live on this earth. But you and I as Christians, we have that problem already solved. We don't have a fear of death because we know that we have life to come. And here's what I want you to see is that many times what we spend our days, weeks, months, years, hours, all of those things pouring into is we pour them into a life that is going to die. Really, we are living for death. We try to accumulate a certain amount of finances. We try to give ourselves the certain house that we want. We try to marry and have certain relationships that we, that we like. So we, we live consumed with a life that is eventually going to die. But on the other hand, according to Scripture, we have the option of living for a life that is to come. We have the option of living for a life after this life. We have an option of living for eternity. And so he kind of expounds on that with a second thought, which is not only that the, does the life of eternity make you unmovable, but the length of eternity should make you unmovable. The length of eternity. He says this in verse number 24. He says, Then cometh the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. The length of eternity. He gives us a little snapshot of what the end times is going to look like. He says this is what the end is going to be. After the resurrection, after you've received your eternal life, 
this is what the end is going to look like. And I gave this illustration when we taught this in the fellowship hall, and so I hope that watching by video or, or listening to the podcast, you can imagine this, maybe use the room that you're sitting in. But behind me is a uh, cinder block wall. And if you would take for just a second and imagine that this cinder block wall is an example of, the, uh, of really eternity. If you want, pick one end of the wall where you're sitting or maybe where you're watching and imagine that as creation. And then imagine that eternity and the life that we've lived down here, you've got the rapture somewhere on this timeline. You've got, you've got the seven years of tribulation. You've got all of these things that happen in the future, all the things that have happened in the past, the things we've read about in scripture and in history. And now you have this snapshot of eternity. The only thing is, is it goes on and on and on forever. It keeps moving. Now, for just a second, think about how small your life is in comparison to that, that timeline. We would be lucky if on this wall behind me that our life even accounts for a small little mortar joint in between the blocks. Why? The Bible says that our life is a vapor. The Bible says that our time here is short. And I gave this quote on the Sunday that we taught it, something that's been helpful to me, and I hope it's something that can be helpful to you, is that history remembers only a few, but eternity forgets no one. And you can either live your life trying to make or change history, or as a child of God, you can live your life to impact eternity. And there's only one of those that's a guarantee. Scripture teaches us that there will come a day to where everyone will give an account for what they've done to God. Both the saved and the unsaved are going to stand before Jesus Christ one day. They're going to stand before God. And as Christians, if you're watching this and you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can live your life trying to make history. Or you can live your life trying to impact eternity. You can live your life laying up treasure, as Matthew chapter number 6 says, where moth and rust doth not corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. And when you put all of your effort and all of your energy and all of your stress and all of your worry into this life, you're never going to impact eternity. You're never going to have anything to show for all of this timeline. And I don't know about you, but I would much rather take my little sliver, my little slice of life that God has given me, and invest it in the years and the days and eternity to come than have only what I've done down here to show for. The last thought is this. Not only does he say that the life of eternity makes us unmovable, the length of eternity should make you unmovable. But then the last thing is this, is that the Lord of eternity should make you unmovable. Look at verse number 27. He says, For he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifested that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him, that, all, that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. What is the goal of prophecy? What's the goal of end times? What's the goal of heaven? If you read scripture, you read through the book of Revelation, I think that what you'll find is that the goal is that God would be glorified. And there is coming a day where, according to Philippians chapter number 2, every tongue shall confess and every knee shall bow. There's coming a day to where God will be all in all. Sometimes I look at prophecy and I look at how we handle it as Christians. I look at how we handle it uh, as a church, as a whole uh, and sometimes we can kind of kind of geek out and nerd out on, on prophecy. And we, we can deep dive. There, there's people, and I'll often make this joke, there's people that won't ever darken the door of a church, but if, they, if you talk to them about the Bible, they want to know everything there is to know about prophecy. And sometimes we wring our hands because, well, I don't, I don't know what this means. I don't know what that means. I, I don't know how this works. and I don't, I don't know how to, how to do that. I don't know what to believe about this. And if prophecy freezes you, you've taken an unbiblical view of it. If it stops you in your tracks, so I can't do anything else for God until I figure this out. No, prophecy is intended to fuel you. It's intended to move you. It's intended to, to motivate you. And when you look at prophecy, here's the truth is that the end is coming. The, the eternity is coming. 
Whether we understand it or not, eternity is coming. And our job should be to step back and take what we know about prophecy, take what we know about the end, take what we know about eternity, and live our lives in a way to where God is all in all while we're here on this earth. That God is glorified in how we live, that God is glorified in how we interact with others, that God is glorified in our gospel witness, that God is glorified in all of these ways. Why? Because there's coming a day to where God is all in all. Why don't you and I just start a little bit earlier and make God our all in all here on this earth. I don't think this is possible, but there's some Christians that we've used our salvation as a fire escape from hell. And now when we stand before God, when we go to heaven, heaven's going to feel a lot different than this earth. There's going to be some Christians that once again, I don't know that it's possible. There may be Christians that are miserable in heaven because it is so foreign to them about how the heaven is going to feel. They've spent so much time focused on life down here. They've spent so much time just focused on everything that this world has to offer to the point that God is not going to be there all in all until they get to eternity. We've been sealed until the day of redemption. The Bible teaches us that. But that doesn't mean that we live our lives down here the way that we desire. That means that we should start a little bit early preparing for heaven and making God our all in all while here on this earth. And so I want you to take a few moments there as we close this. I'm going to close with a word of prayer. Ask the Lord to help us. But eternity makes us unmovable. And if your desire is to be stable in a society that is so unstable, to where stability, I believe, is going to begin to be attractive, then what I would ask you to do is to step back and say, what am I living my life for? What am I trying to cram into my slice of life? Am I more focused on the length of days I've been given down here? Am I living for death or am I living for the life that is to come? The length of eternity. Am I trying to make history or am I trying to impact eternity? And then I ask that you would take just a moment and say, what, what is the Lord of my life? What's controlling me? Does God have access to everything? Is he my all in all? And I believe that as you do that, what you'll find is that it has a way of making you unmovable. It has a way of stabilizing you. The things that worry you now don't matter in light of eternity. Now don't matter when hard times come. Because it's an opportunity for you to show the world around you of the life that you have in eternity, the length of eternity, and the Lord of eternity is the Lord of your life. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to look into your word. I ask that you bless these young adults, help them to be able to take this and apply it to their hearts and lives. Thank you for allowing them to take the time to watch it and to, uh, to um, hopefully grow in you. Lord, I ask that you bless our class. Lord, bless our um, uh, the lesson that was taught today. Lord, I ask that you be with us as we go throughout our day. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for taking the time to watch that lesson that was recorded in our class at Cross Point at Franklin Road Baptist Church. We hope you found something that you can take and apply to your Christian life. Cross Point is all about providing you with applicational biblical teaching that you can take and apply to your life at this stage. Come see us some Sunday at 10 o'clock at Franklin Road Baptist Church. We hope to see you there.